Like nearly everyone else who is into the Horus Heresy, I have used the Betrayal of Kalth Chaplain model quite a few times across a number of armies, but I still have this spare one that I need to put to good use. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I turned it into a company champion for my Bad Ab War projects. The biggest challenge with converting this kit though, is that while it's super detailed and dynamically posed, it's really hard to convert because of how it was designed as a mono-posed kind of push-fit model. Sure, you can swap out the plasma pistol fairly easily for another weapon, but fundamentally altering the pose is almost impossible without seriously hacking apart the model. So of course, I immediately grabbed my clippers and exacto knife and got to work. Starting with the left arm, I carefully cut away the entire arm at the shoulder by using my exacto knife, which I used here. This arm bit's pretty cool, and I can definitely see using it for a future project down the line. Next up, I attacked the entire shoulder pad and kept covering it with my hobby clippers, as if I left it on, it would have effectively locked me into a pose with the arm outstretched and firing which would be ridiculous because I literally just lopped off the arm to change the pose up. There were a couple of pieces of the cape they left behind, and a little hard to reach my clippers, so I do go back with my hobby knife to scrape them away. But I'm not super concerned about being neat and tidy here, as instead my goal is to really just make room for a new arm and shoulder pad to fit. Most of the parts I'm cutting away here will be hidden anyways, so I don't worry about trying to make this perfect. Speaking of making sure everything fits though, after I'd picked out a potential arm, I tried to dry fit a shoulder pad and was quite surprised to find that these circular cape clasps blocked the shoulder pad from sitting flush against the model. So of course, these also had to be removed. At this point, I wasn't quite sure I'd cover these cuts up, but as will become a recurring theme in this video, I decided that was a problem for future me to solve. Continuing my cutting spree, I also removed the head and the other arm and shoulder pad as well. For the arms, I happened to grab a spare Mark II arm set that I had in my bits box, but I was more concerned about the posing here than the specific mark of armor. Company champions are some of the greatest warriors of a Space Marine chapter, and although they don't hold a position of command, they're tasked with upholding the honor of the company, the chapter, and even the Emperor himself. I envisioned this company champion conflict striding across the battlefield is focused singularly on hunting down and engaging his enemy. The base chaplain model I'm using already nails his posing with the legs, as, unlike the majority of most first born marine models, they are neither planted firmly on the ground nor in an all out sprint. Instead, they are posed as if the model is methodically pacing towards his target. I've found that when kit bashing monopose models such as this, careful consideration of the existing pose is pretty critical. If I decide to pose the arms in a more action-oriented way, as if they were kind of mid-swing or about to strike, the resulting conversion would look fairly incongruous as the arms wouldn't really match what the legs are doing. It was about at this point though that I ran into a pretty major problem. You see, company champions are traditionally armed with a combat shield in addition to their power weapon, and I just could not get one to fit in a way that I liked with the existing cape in the way. So of course, I once again got out my clippers and got to work. The thought did cross my mind that I have no idea how to reconstruct, let alone sculpt a cape, but skill gaps be damned. I had a vision for this model and I had full confidence in future me figuring it out. After the cape was sufficiently cut back, I attached another spare Mark II arm, as well as a combat shield that I found in my bits box. When I went to put the shoulder pad on though, I ran into yet another issue with getting it to fit. Clearly this model was not intended to be abused like this. Instead of scraping away more of the cape, however, I just clipped off the back portion of the shoulder pad and glued it on. I'm planning on covering this portion up later anyway with green stuff, so this approach seemed easier. I still have a bit of work to do on the shield arm, but I figured that at this point I'd start trying to tackle the first cape sculpting piece over the axe arm. The way I saw it, if I couldn't get this piece figured out, the entire idea of the conversion was dead in the water. To start with, I took a blob of green stuff mixed with some epoxy sculpt and roughly smushed it over where I wanted the fabric to be. This mixture was about 70% green stuff to 30% epoxy sculpt, 
and I've been using this combination a lot recently for sculpting, as I find it far easier to work with than pure green stuff. After the rough shape of the fabric was sculpted, all I really did was use a cone-shaped silicone color shaper tool to push the putty around until it started to resemble cloth. Starting with two folds leading down to the skull detailing on the chest, I just kept pushing and prodding the green stuff into position and added a few more folds near the backpack where I thought the fabric might bunch up. Honestly, I was a bit shocked by how easily this worked, and I think that the silicone tool I used was key. The cone shape was perfect for sculpting organic looking folds, and because it's made of silicone, I found that I only needed a little bit of water to prevent the putty from sticking to it. While doing this, I was careful to make sure the edge of the cloak remained straight and I needed to push it back into position a few times as sculpting the folds pushed it out every now and then. When sculpting these folds, I found that it was key to make sure the folds were fairly straight, as originally I had a couple kinks in my folds and they just looked off, kind of not like I would think cloth would naturally bunch up. But I was able to sort this out by using longer, um, strokes I guess, with my sculpting tool. As a quick aside, I have no idea which verb to use when describing my actions when sculpting. Like, with painting I can say, I use longer or shorter brush strokes, but I don't know if that works for sculpting. If anyone knows the correct term to use here, please let me know in the comments below. I found that I spent quite a while working this piece, constantly going back and redefining a fold or evening out the peaks of the cloth to make them look more uniform. Because of this process though, I'm having a tricky time providing detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how I sculpted this. As I followed a very iterative process that I would constantly go back and rework or even redo chunks of this piece. Sometimes, those changes would mess up something I already did, or I'd go back and redo a piece. But over the course of about 30 minutes, all these small tweaks led to something I was really proud of. For the longest time, I was afraid of trying to sculpt because I thought that I immediately needed to get to the finished product and got discouraged when my putty still looked like garbage after only a few minutes of working it. I found that when doing this model, taking a more laid back approach really helped me enjoy the process more. And while I still have a long way to go in my green stuff sculpting journey, I found that this really helped me build confidence in tackling future projects that require serious green stuff work. Once I got to the point that I was happy with how the cloth was looking, I put the model down for the night. I have messed up so many sculpting sessions because I got impatient and accidentally put a thumb in a still uncured putty. So, now once I get to a point that I'm happy with a small detail being finished, I set the model down and wait for everything to cure. To finish off the cape over the left shoulder pad, I found this pretty cool tilting shield in my bits box from the old Forge World Resin Cataphracty kit that was a perfect size to replace the cape clasp I cut off before. This is a rather old bit, and I'm not sure how easy it will be to find if you're trying to do something similar, but later on I'll show you how I built the other clasp using nothing more than some green stuff and a rivet. The next day, I started off by smashing some putty onto the shield arm where I'd previously cut off a piece of the shoulder pad. As I was only doing this to add some bulk to make future sculpting easier, I didn't worry too much about refining, only that it was the correct general shape of the shoulder pad. My thought here was that it'd be far easier to make the cloth appear draped over the shoulder armor if it was actually there as opposed to the void I had before. In order to ensure the cape will flow correctly around the combat shield, I wanted to build the right arm completely before moving on to any more sculpting. This was fairly straightforward, and the only real challenge here was finding a suitable hand that was not carrying a pistol or weapon. I ended up using a spare power sword arm and just cutting off the sword and hand to attach to the Mark II arm I'd already selected. After that, all I did was use a small sausage of green stuff to create a handle that the hand could use to hold the shield, and I was ready to get back to sculpting the cape. Green stuff and other similar putties are pretty terrible at holding flat, thin shapes with no support. Because they are pretty malleable, I have found that they need some form of backing, or any attempt to shape them will just result in frustration. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to use for this model, as I did have this large chunk of area that I needed to re-sculpt the cape. Luckily, 
I had actually saved a bit of the original plastic cape I cut away before, and with a little more trimming, I was able to get this to roughly fit where I wanted to sculpt the rest of the cape. When trimming this plastic bit, I made sure to also cut out around the shield, and this is because I felt that the cloth would conform to the shield and flow around it, as opposed to sitting next to it. It might be a minor detail, but in the real world, the cloth would not act like rigid plastic, well, obviously, and would instead conform to objects that it's touching. If I didn't cut this piece and re-sculpt it later, it'd be pretty obvious that I was using two pieces that were not meant to go together, but by paying attention to this small detail, I hope that the finished product looks more like an official model and less like a kit bash. As mentioned previously, it's really hard to sculpt green stuff if there's nothing backing up what you're sculpting over. This would have been an issue with this large gap that was left between the two pieces of the plastic cape, so I first jammed some spare green stuff in there and let it cure. Once again, I'm not super concerned about making this look good, as I'll be sculpting over it later, but I do want to ensure that it's relatively flat so it doesn't get in the way of the next layer. Once the filler was cured, I tackled the rest of the cape in the same way that I did the other shoulder pad, with the only real difference being that I made this portion a little wider and covered up more of the shoulder pad. This was because I wanted the sculpted cape to blend nicely with the plastic cape I had just glued on, so I made sure the outermost edges lined up. There were also a couple of folds in the plastic piece, but I was able to easily blend these into the sculpted folds I was working on. Once again, I think that small details such as this really helped to elevate the final model and make it look more cohesive. Around the combat shield, I also applied a couple layers of putty to make the cape look like it was conforming to the shield. I did run into some trouble here though, as the first layer was too flimsy to sculpt how I wanted to. So instead I used the first layer to get the basic shape blocked in and provide support for the second, which was much more refined. Other than those small differences though, I followed the exact same process as I did before, and once again I was surprised with what I was able to do. While it might not be perfect, I was very pleased with how this conversion was turning out. For the last small detail of the cape, I take a small triangle of green stuff and epoxy sculpt mix and blend it into the corner. It took a bit of poking and prodding to get into the shape that I wanted to, but pretty soon it matched the other side and added a really nice unified look to this cape. To finish this model off, all I needed to do was sculpt the final clasp, and this was done by taking a small ball of green stuff and flattening out with a sculpting tool dipped in water. To add a bit more detail, I just took one of these resin rivets from Zinge Industries, cut off the post, and pressed it into the still curing green stuff. After that, I added a bare head from the Space Marine Tactical Squad, and the model was finished. I was a bit nervous at first with this conversion, as it's by far one of my most ambitious kit bashes I've done on this channel, and has far more sculpting than I think I've done on another model ever. But I'm really happy with how it turned out, and I'll definitely be doing some more sculpting in the future. If you liked this video, I have a bunch more on my channel like it, and I put a new hobby or painting tutorial out every week, so come back frequently and check them out. As always, thanks for watching and hobby on.